Well, good morning and thank you for joining us here at the Friendship Baptist Church of Delaware. As we often say all the time, we hope and pray that your week has been wonderful and we pray that your day shall be made great. We honor all of you, my father's children, uh, in the persons of our deacons and our trustees and saints and friends that make up the great body of believers called the Friendship Baptist Church. We want you to know that we're praying for you and may the Lord bless you is our prayer. Let's go and pray this morning. Father, we thank you for this moment, for this time that you have allowed us to come into your homes. And thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way. Father, we even thank you for friendship on this morning. Father, we ask you right now that you would do us a favor and touch us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet. We thank you, Father, because you said in your word and everything to give thanks. And Father, we give you thanks right now for who you are and what you have done thus far. We love you and we thank God for you, Lord. You have been better to us than we've been to ourselves. If we had 10,000 tongues, we could not praise you enough because you're worthy of that and more. And we give your name praise and we give your name honor. In Jesus' name we say amen. We're grateful to the Lord that the Lord has allowed us to come into your homes or wherever you may be viewing us from for another Sunday, our virtual worship encounter. We understand that we are in some uh, crazy times in the world because we know it's all that is going on with the COVID and things of that nature that we believe in God, that God will still get the glory. And we want you to continue to pray for one another because uh, the enemy, this virus and things of that nature is 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 really uh, taking a toll, but we believe God because the Bible tells us now faith is the substance of things hoped for and it is the evidence of things not seen. And the last verse tells us without faith, it's impossible to please God. We're gonna please God through our faith and we're blessing God. Let's go right into the word of the Lord as we give you this word this morning. Let's go right out of Psalm 27. Psalm 27, verses 12 through 14 out of the King James. It says, Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies. For false witnesses are rise up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord and in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Uh, we're going to use out of uh, verse 12, deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. For false witnesses are raised up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. Uh, out of the Passion Translation, it says, don't let them defeat me, Lord. You can't let me fall into their clutches. They are accusing me of things I've never done while they plot evil against me. I want to use for a subject this morning, Lord, help me not to fall. Lord, help me not to fall. Claude Pepper penned this quote Life is like riding a bicycle. You don't fall off unless you stop pedaling. No matter what happens in your life, brothers and sisters, never stop pedaling. In other words, never stop moving. I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care how tumultuous the, 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 the things that you go through it might be. Keep 
moving. Keep moving. And our lesson this morning, our lesson this morning out of verse number 12, it says, deliver me not over unto the will of my enemies. In other words, it was saying the soul of my enemies. Now, they, they have a desire uh, to, uh, which has no doubt to capture him. They wanted to bring him a uh, prisoner to Jerusalem. Uh, for here it is, for the false witnesses are raised up against me. Uh, they uh, which uh, were attached itself to Absalom uh, accused David of cruelty to the house of Saul out of 2 Samuel 16 and 8. And probably the other criminals or other crimes and mis misdemeanors. Absalom himself accused him of a false or false a failure in his kind kingly duties uh, out of second samuel chapter 15 and 8 and such as they breathe out cruelty or violence uh, to breathe out violence threat slaughter uh, malice uh, malice it is a common metaphor in many languages in acts chapter 1 or rather cha acts chapter 9 verse 1 uh, the psalm here it is a cry for help out of psalm 27 it is a cry for help a declaration of belief in the grip the greatness of god and trust in the protection god provides deliver me not over until the will of my enemies let them not accomplish in other words he was saying don't allow them to accomplish their desires in regards to me let them not be able uh, to carry out their purpose i don't know who it is this morning but you ought to understand that there is an enemy there is a, a devil there is a person that is waiting uh, to uh, have a desire to carry out something uh, a, a desire to carry out the purpose to destroy you to do, to bring you down but i want to tell you right now this morning that no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper it was formed but it will not work i dare you to put it in the comment and say it will not work here it is the word here rendered will means properly so but it is, is used here uh, to denote wise and desire for the false witnesses are raised up against me. People who 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 would lay false charges against him or or who would wrongly accuse him, they charged him for the crimes with crimes which he never committed. And they persecuted him as if he was guilty of what they alleged him for. You got to understand something, brothers and sisters. Here it is that we 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 have people, we have we have uh, uh, enemies that will uh, uh, plague. They they they're doing all manner of evil things to bring up charges of things that they have no no regard for, they have no knowledge of, but because they have something in their mind, and what they have in their mind is that they don't want to see you go to the, the enemy never wants you to ski you go to the next level the enemy desire is never for you to see get your full potential but it is for him to breathe out cruelty so that he can try and destroy you but tell somebody put it in the comment and tell them it will not work they are intended they they are intended on this that means they they would not let up they plan it for this the uh, and, and and while brothers and sisters and 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 and, and why I want to tell you this while we are in this first quarter of 2022 don't allow the object of people's mindset to offset your destiny don't allow the object of people's mindset to offset your destiny. We look and understand uh, the life and the story of Job. Job gives us great hope and faith when life took him in another direction. 
he went through a season that really none of us would have been able to handle. What do you mean? You, you, you and I would not have been able to handle in a matter of one day. Job is minding his business, but now God and the devil have a conversation. And the Bible says that God uh, uh, says, have you considered my servant Job? Uh, he said, but the devil said, every time I try to touch him, there is a hedge around him. He said, no, I remove the hedge, but I'm going to tell you this, that no matter what you try to do, he's not going to curse me. The Bible says that now uh, God and the devil have a conversation. They have an agreement. And the Bible says that one day Job is minding his business. But in a matter of one day, he loses his children. He loses his cattle. His wife has gone crazy. And the, fact of the, and, the, and the fact of the matter is that last but not least, but Job now finds himself stricken with boils. But he did not charge God foolish. And you got to understand something, brothers and sisters, that no matter what you go through in your life, it is not for you to uh, uh, take your tent, uh, fold up your tent and move, but it's for you to stay, have your feet planted and tell the devil you are a liar, that I shall not be moved. And the Bible says that he loses his children, he loses his cattle, and he even has stricken with boys, but he did not charge God foolish but for anything. But why? Because he already knew that God was going to bring him out. But he had a faith that was stronger than you and I, that he realized and understand, yeah, I love my children, I love my cattle, but I trust God. Brothers and sisters, this morning, I want to tell you, you got to, no matter what you go through in your life, you have to trust God. And the Bible says that here now, here, that he, not, not only did Job lose everything, but he had some so-called friends. And the Bible says that he, slowly but surely, his friends that he thought he had, when he needed them the most, they were not there. But even at the end of Job's life, in Job chapter 42, the Bible says Job got back double for his trouble. That I want to tell you something, that God is going to pay you for all the trouble that you that you suffer, for every tear that you shed, for every for every lie that was told on you, for every yeah, it's some of the things you got to understand brothers and sisters that, that that God will not allow you to go through anything and he not pay you for it. God is not like man because man man will work you to death but never pay you for what you will never pay you for your work but God is not that type of man but he says here in verse 1 in verse 12 don't let them defeat me lord in other words, Lord, don't let them do this. Whatever they are plotting, whatever they are trying to do, don't let them defeat me. Uh, you you can't let me fall into their, their clutches. You can't let me fall into their traps because you got to understand something that the enemy has traps. He has he has booby traps. He has all kind of, he has traps in people. He has traps in things. He has traps in, 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 in all manner of things. But you have to understand that he's saying God, he's saying God don't let me fall into their clutches. He said, not only that, but they keep accusing me of things that I've never done while they're plotting evil against me. But you got to understand something here that he said that, 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 that he said I in verse 13, he said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. In the land of the, he said, I would have fainted that there were some of you that that are that are, at, that are, are you're at your end, you're 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 you're, you're going through, you you feel like you're at your end. But I want to tell you something that, that 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 you cannot faint, you can't give up. He said because I would have fainted unless I had believed to see 
the goodness of the Lord. In other words, he would have fainted. He, you would have given up, but you had a hope. You saw a vision because you did not let you did not allow uh, what you see to affect what God spoke over your life. He said, "I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered in the heart of man the great things God has." So, but then verse fourteen says, "Wait on the Lord." And brothers and sisters, we must understand we have to learn how to wait. Now, I understand that now we're in this, this COVID season and everything now causes us to wait even the, the more. But, but it will try your patience. It will try. Right? It will test how strong you are. But I want to tell you something to, uh, this, this morning. you got to learn how to wait. Wait on the Lord. But not only wait on the Lord, but you got to be of good courage. Because not only that, because he said he will strengthen thine heart. And it says, wait, I say, on the Lord. you got to learn how to wait. Not only this in your waiting, but you got to learn to have good courage. Not only having good courage, but you know, you got to understand he's going to strengthen your heart. Then it says, wait. Then he says, wait again. Why is he saying wait? Because he understands that everything that God does, it takes time. And you got to be patient enough to know that, God, I it might have been a year, two years, three years. But, Father, I have no other choice but to trust you. I want to tell you today that you got to understand something that even though we're in these trying times, that you cannot let your faith waver. You can't, you can't allow the enemy to plague your mind. You can allow the enemy to take you to a place that God has delivered you from, that he's brought you out of. That verse 12 says, deliver me not over into the will of mine enemies. Don't, in other words, don't hand me over to them. Because the false witnesses, in other words, they're rising up because we're, we're in a season now. The day the Bible is just being fulfilled, that it says in the last days, perilous times will come. That when men will become lovers of themselves, having itchy ears. In other words, they will believe a lie before they believe the truth. That they will say there is no God, but the fool have said in their heart, there is no God. But I want to tell you today that there, there, there is a fool out there that believes there is a God. And I am the fool because I believe that God, even in this, that God knows exactly what he's doing. But he said, deliver me not over into the hand or deliver me not over into the will of my enemies. But it says for false witnesses arise up against me and such. I'll breathe out purity. But he said, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord. I know these times that we're in, it seems dark. It seems dreary. It seems like God is not answering. But I want to tell you something. God does his best work in the night. Uh, there, there, there was a time there, there, there. I know that we were in a, we we're in a modern day now that you don't need a camera. Uh, you can take a picture with your phone and you get it instant. But I grew up when we had to uh, had the camera. You, you didn't know how the pictures was going to turn out. You, you took your pictures and you took them to the shop. And they did. They took them and they developed them and they put them in a uh, in a dark room. 
And while they put them in the dark room, they were the pictures were being developed. You didn't know how good the pictures were going to turn out. You don't know what they were going to look like. But they were being developed. And in that dark room, you had to be careful because you did not want to mess up what you what you were waiting for. And I want to tell somebody tonight, today, that I know that you might be in a, seem like you're in a dark room. But understand the dark room is just the developing room. That God is developing us. That he's, 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 he's looking over our future. He's looking over all that he's done for us. And that when we are fully developed, he's going to bring us out. And I want to tell you something today as a word of encouragement today. That don't allow your faith to wave. That you got to understand something today. And you got to make sure that you understand where you are. That the enemy wants you to give up. The enemy wants you to give in. But you ought to tell the devil. Give up might be around me. But give up is not in me. Because greater is he that is within me. Than he that is in the world. And I want to tell you something today. That no matter what you're going through in your life. That no matter what you're going through in your life. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he shall repent. What he has spoken. He is able to do. And I want to tell you something today. As we, we move in this time, that God is getting ready to work a miracle on your behalf. I know you're saying, you're saying, God, I don't know how you're going to make do of this. I don't know how you're going to bring me out of this. I don't know how you're going to do this because it seems like I don't know how you're going to make. But God says, if you trust me. I'll bring you out. If you allow me to heal you, I'll deliver you. I want to pray for you today. Because I sense in this era that we're in, this moment that we're in, that someone feel like they've Falling in the trap. You're saying, God, I, I, I don't know how, how, how to make it out of this. But I want to offer you Jesus today. I want to offer you Jesus today. I want to offer you Jesus because there are some of you you, say, if you, you you might not know him in a part of your sins. I, I don't want to end this word today without giving you the opportunity to get, get to know Jesus. Repeat after me and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I, I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and my life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. In your name, amen. Listen, if you said that prayer today, you are saved. 
get yourself in a Bible believing, Bible teaching church. That I believe that this is the first step into your new life. Welcome to the family of God. Listen, we want to ask you to continue to pray for our friendship family today. Many are sick, but we believe in God that they shall be healed in Jesus' name. Listen, join us every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. for our Wednesday night Word Alive Bible class. And join us every Sunday at 10 a.m. for our uh, virtual worship experience. Uh, well, our first and third is our virtual worship experience. Second and fourth is our in-person worship at 10 a.m. But brothers and sisters, we we want you, and we offer you, and we invite you to join us. Tag tag a friend. Go to the YouTube and tell somebody, like, comment, share, subscribe to the YouTube channel because there is a word that's changing lives and we believe God for you. Listen, we love you. May the blessings of the Lord be upon you. Remember the word today. Lord, don't let me fall. I've fallen, but Lord, allow me to get back up. In your grace, in your timing, in your way. Listen, we love you. And may the blessing of the Lord be upon you is our prayer. Go in peace. We'll see you in church.